as we get started. I'll start again. Does anyone else have any questions? Anyone else have any questions? Bible study, Sunday morning, anything that's in the news that you want to do or discuss, have clarity on. Any questions? All right. So there are no questions. Let's get, it, let's get into your, your handout. Everyone have a handout? Handout? Anyone that does not have a handout? Is that easier? All right. All right. So the, 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 the title of this, this, this handout is what? Anybody tell me what this title of this handout? Bears to Godly Relationships and Progress. Barriers to Godly Relationships and Progress. Now, we're still in the course of studying on casting out devils and dealing with the devils. Uh, however, based on some things that transpired on Sunday, we want to pause here to deal with some things that I believe that is causing uh, the people at this church not to reach the mark to operate in the fullness of God and to do what God has called us to do. We just thank God for the ones that are on Facebook. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to type them in or, or, and then we can address you all accordingly and we just thank God for you being there. Send us a thumbs up or hello or amen. Let us know that you're there and you are watching. All right. So barriers to a godly relationships and progress. So here we are. We are here talking about barriers. Does anybody know what is a barrier? Anybody know what a barrier is? Yes ma'am. Something that blocks you from getting to your destination. Now how many people know that sometimes you are your biggest blocker? All right, you are the major portion or the major person in your life that blocks or hinders your progress. You are the major barrier, a barrier. And so if you look at the, uh, the, the between in our parking lot, uh, there's a fence there. That fence is a barrier. All right, the only way to get from our property to the next property is you have to cross that barrier. All right, and here's what happens in our lives. Sometimes our mindset set up barriers. Um, uh, Michaela, do me a favor, give Brother Roman a handout for tonight's lesson. So, barriers to godly relationships. So, now, God, what is a godly relationship? Anyone know what a godly relationship is? What is a godly relationship? No, what is a relationship? What, what, would, what, what would a relationship look like that had God's approval or God's step of approval on it? What would that look like? Loving, respectful. Anybody else? What would it look like to have a godly relationship? What is a relationship? Anybody know what a relationship is? Anybody? Hmm? Derek, you know what a relationship is? What's a relationship? Anybody know what a relationship is? A connection with somebody. Amen. A connection with somebody. On, on Sunday, I was talking to the young people, teaching them in their class, and I asked them, I said, now, uh, does anybody know what love is? And then, and then they started talking about affection. I said, no, no, that's demonstration. Affection is just an attribute of love. Uh, uh, the one, of the most, uh, uh, one of the best characteristics of love is correction. Correction means if I see somebody that's going in the wrong direction because I love them, I'm going to correct them. So some, here's what happens in a godly, godly relationship. If you are in a godly relationship, your godly friends will stop you from doing things that are not godly. That, that means you, they will stop you from doing things that God will not be pleased with. Right, right. All right? And so if you're demonstrating attitudes and mannerisms and lifestyles that's going against the will of God, if they have the love of God, they will tell you, sister, you can't do that. Brother, that's wrong. Because that's what's called a godly relationship. A purpose of a relationship is to get you from point A to point B, to get you from your presence to your destiny, and you have to be connected with godly people to make progress. Somebody say progress. Progress. Michael, I need you to sit on the other side with your sister. And so you have, to have, you have to be connected with the right people to go higher. So if you want to go higher, you got to watch your connections. If you don't want to go higher, keep on hanging with the people that, you, that has gotten you where you are right now because you're not going anywhere fast. So here's what you have to do is you have to take an inventory. Somebody say take an inventory. Take an inventory. So bar barriers to godly relationships and progress. And again, we dealt with this. And, and as I was praying about you all and dealing with what was going on just in um, the Sunday service, what God revealed to me was perception filters. Somebody say perception filters. Perception filters. 
exception for And here's what God shared with me. He says, when you talk to people today, because many people today are contaminated. Somebody say contaminated. contaminated. Many people are contaminated in their spirits, and many of us are contaminated because of our environments. All right? What does it mean to be contaminated? That means there's another substance, something else going on inside of you because of where you came from. And so if you have an environment where everybody is mean or distrustful or evil or ghetto, well, you may be a good person, but your spirit is going to be contaminated by your environment. Okay? And so what, what, ha what happens is this. Let's say if somebody hurt you. Well, now your spirit is contaminated by hurt, so you have now this distrust for people. So when you come into a relationship with somebody, that's a barrier. Somebody say barrier. It's a barrier because you're contaminated. You have to get that out of you because guess what? If you don't get that out of you, you're going to take that same mindset into a new relationship, and before you know it, you don't trust them. Uh, no. All right, let's, let, let's go back to hurt because see, many people I've found out that have been hurt in their life. And the reason why you hurt people is because you're contaminated with hurt. And you never got over the hurt or the pain that people did to you. So now you turn around and hurt people. Watch this now. It's inadvertently. It's not on purpose. You don't want to do it, but it's inside your spirit because your spirit is contaminated. Somebody say contaminated. Okay. And the only way you can get that out of that, you've got to be blood washed and filled with the Holy Ghost. All right, because what happens is this: the Bible says, "Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new." Somebody say, "Decontaminated." Decontaminated. All right, and so what goes on in the church is you have people that's actively involved in church work that have never been decontaminated. In other words, they have never been filled with God's Spirit. Does that make sense? Oh. All right, and so I'm trying to get to the basis of why you all are having issues with each other and why you why there's a struggle, why there's attitudes, why there's fighting, why there's strife. It all comes from contamination. Somebody say contamination. All right, because see, listen, I need you to understand, there is no disunity with people that have the Holy Ghost. If there's disunity, struggle, strife, adversity, animosity inside of any situation, you need to understand your flesh is contaminated. Come on, say, neighbor. My flesh, my flesh may be contaminated, may be contaminated. and I, yeah. with, God's strength, with God's strength, will get decontaminated. decontaminated. Huh? And so here's what the Holy Ghost showed me. We have perception filters, and what, the way it works is this. You receive and process information based on your perception. On the other day, uh, we did my niece's funeral here, and then one of my, uh, my other nieces was sitting in the back, and after church was over, after we finished doing the service, I saw her walking up in the parking lot, and I went and I rubbed her hair. All right? And, and what came out of her mouth was, oh, I know my ears are sticking up and my hair is nasty. I said, I said why would you even just go negative? And the reason why she went negative is because in her perception, everything that people bring to her is a negative connotation. Does that make sense? So here I am. I'm coming to give her a compliment. I, 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 can't, I, was, I was admiring her hair. I said, I'm like, wow, that's a nice braid. She had these nice, thick braids, and everything was pretty. She had her little hair, you know, they, I don't know what they call it, the baby hair with the little slick stuff. It was all nice. To me, it looked good. So I'm going to give her a compliment, but because of her perception, she sees it as negative. Here's what happens, brothers and sisters. We, 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 we put people in categories and we respond to people based on our contamination, not theirs. Oh, okay. So you just now, I saw what I told her, I said, you just eliminated a good opportunity for a compliment. She said, oh, thank you. I wasn't expecting that. And I, I, and I just got a revelation out of that because many people today always expect the worst or they wait for the shoot or fall or somebody to take advantage of them because guess what? It's inside of your spirit. Oh, okay. All right? You don't trust people because you don't tell the truth. It's quiet up in here. And so because you don't tell the truth, you have this mindset that the people that's talking to you don't tell the truth. All right, you don't trust people because you think they have an agenda or a hidden agenda. And the reason why that's there is because you have a hidden agenda. You're contaminated. Somebody say contaminated. contaminated. So your perception filters, when someone saying something to you, it's, 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 it becomes fleshly. Somebody say fleshly. fleshly. And here's what happens. When you call yourself a child of God and your perception is still contaminated, it does not matter what they're trying to do. It's going to come to you and it's going to hit you wrong. All right? The reason why people get into fights is because somebody said something to them wrongly. Yeah, that's right, yeah. 
But guess what? They didn't say it wrong. You heard it wrong. <laughs> so. All right? And the reason why you heard it wrong is because of your perception is contaminated by your history that you never got delivered from. All right? Because I need you to understand, when you have the Holy Ghost, when you have the fullness of the Holy Ghost, words can't hurt you. No, not at all. Because words cannot penetrate the full armor of God. It's quiet up in here. Hey, words cannot, words cannot, well, how can words penetrate the helmet of salvation? Amen. How can words penetrate the truth of your Lord's and girded in truth? You can't even get your toes stepped on because your, your feet are shot with the preparation. Does that make sense? All right? And the reason why you're getting, effect, you're getting affected by negative words is because your perception is contaminated. And here's what happens. You take what they're saying as absolute power. You give people power over you they ain't supposed to have. Mm -hmm. All right? And listen to me. The reason why this is dangerous is because the devil will take those same avenues to get into your spirit as people do. Yeah, right, yeah. All right? And see, when the devil comes in, he's coming in to kill, to steal, and destroy. He's coming in to stay a while. He's coming in to leave a few demons and to leave his fragrance. People just come to hurt you normally just for a season or to back you up off of them. Sometimes you don't need to, you don't understand this, but sometimes people will say evil stuff just to get you away from them. They don't really want to be evil. They don't really want to be mean. They just don't want to be bothered right now. Okay, yeah, right. All right? And the reason why they don't be, why want to be bothered right now is because of perception. Somebody say perception. All right, so first thing, first thing, first thing I need you to understand and identify, if you're walking in the flesh, when somebody comes across and says anything to you, the first thing out of your mouth, in your mind, is they're insulting me. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's why I told you all a few months ago, resist the urge to defend yourself. The reason why I told you that is because I girl, know that many of you that dress don't look good on you. They're trying to help you to let you know it's wrong. Your mind, because you receive it as an insult, say, who are you to tell me my dress don't look good? No way. <laughs> right? That dress don't right. Look. And that comes from insult. Because I guess you take, you take an, a, 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 somebody trying to show you love and correction and you put that right into the insult category. And nobody in here likes to be insulted. Can I get one witness up in here? And the devil puts you into the mindset of being insulted even when somebody was not trying to. Amen. Well, watch this now. Let me help you all out really, really quickly. Even if they were trying to insult you on purpose, you still should not be insulted when you got the Holy Ghost. Okay, yeah, I get yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Just, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because watch this now. If someone can insult you with words, that means their word is larger than the word of God. That means now you've taken them and placed them in the position of God. Yeah. But, Come on. But that dress don't look good on you. That's not like an insult. <laughs> <laughs> that dress may not look good on you because you have a different body shape. And, and, and I'm sure this because see, you can walk into the mall and they have those mannequins sitting up there with dresses on. Just because the dress looks good on a mannequin don't mean it looks good on your body shape. Everybody in here has a different body shape. Mm -hmm. All right? Everybody in here has a different body shape. What look good on Samantha may not look good on Susie. All right? And just because you see Samantha with something, don't mean you need to go put it on. Does that make sense up in here? Right? You have to get things that fit your personality and fit your body style. And here's what you do. You get things that don't make you stick out like a sore thumb. And if you have a real good friend, a real good friend will say, girl, that does not look right on you. Or you don't look good in that. This is your friend. All right, and watch this now. Many times your friends will correct you before you get critiqued and criticized by your enemy. All right, and, and here's what happens. It's, it's, it's a whole lot better to get the critique from your friend than to go out and get criticized by your enemy. Now you're ready to fight. Yeah. Am I ready? Are you, yeah, are you yeah, making yeah, sense? Yeah. All right, and so what the devil would do is he'll set you up to get into an attitude because he loves to operate when people get into a negative mindset. He likes to get you negative. So what he'll do is he will get your perception messed up. To let you, and this is what the devil does to many folk. He'll have you looking at the people giving you advice. And the first thing in your brain is, well, if it's not working for them, then why are they trying to get it to me? Okay. 
Right? And see, watch this now. You may not realize this. They may not have enough strength to get out. God is speaking through them to give them a word. And let me share you this with you really quickly because, see, in the Bible, there was a prophet named Balaam. Y'all remember the story, right? What Balaam had was talked to and corrected by a donkey. Am I right about it? No. Well, guess what? Even after that donkey corrected Balaam, he was still a donkey. <laughs> Can I get a word with this up in here? Yeah, okay, yeah. So you can't look at, you can't keep on continuing to look at the messenger because God can use anything or anybody to give you a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. If you're not contaminated. Because, see, if you're contaminated, like I told you in Philippians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse number, from number 8, when you're thinking about everything that's lovely, positive, the good report, guess what? You don't have any time for contaminated thoughts. That's why I told you all to memorize that verse. Am I right about it? All right, so for your perception, your filters, so the first thing that when people say something to you, you get insulted. Somebody say insulted. insulted. And when you get insulted, it's automatically attitude. Can I get one witness up in here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Automatically, they insulted me. No, yes, ma'am. Yeah. When you talk about that verse. Um, Philippians 4, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 8. Yeah. Okay, let's put it on the screen. Philippians chapter number 4. What's your question? Why are you getting it? Because it's your filters. Amen. 
But guess what? You need to get rid of those filters. Someone said, get rid of those filters. All right? Those filters are your barriers. Amen. Those filters are your barriers. A while back, we were having an issue with our sound system. And we had have, we have this, uh, this feedback component that was used inside of the PA system to cancel out the feedback. So I called an expert that does PA systems. Now, he was going to charge a lot of money to come to fix our system. I said, well, why don't you just tell me how to do it, and I'll do it. So he began to explain to me, he said, well, here's what happens. See, your noise component, that, that thing that's in there that cancels out feedback, what that does, it does a computer analysis of the sound waves in the building, and it will go ahead and remove those frequencies that's causing the sound feedback. He said, well, what happened is it, 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 it gets to a point where it's removed so many frequencies that your music or your voice would not be clear. All right? And then what he said was, this is what, what really blew, blew my mind. He says, he said, now, are you having a feedback box and an equalizer? I, I said, yeah, we do. He said, well, guess what you're doing? Now you're, 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 you're canceling out one with the other. Yeah, right. Because you're trying to add frequency with the equalizer while you're trying to eliminate frequency with the feedback box. He said, one of those got to go. Come on, lay aside every way to the sin. All right? And see, the reason why we can't hear from God is we got too many components going on. Come on, say, something's got to go. Got to go. All right, because guess what? Your perception is, not, is automatically insult. Then the next thing is, is on here is accusation. Because when somebody comes to you, they're accusing you of something. Again, all these lead into a negative connotation. It's going to get you going into the negative mode. Because watch this now. If you come and insult me and now you accuse me of something, i got to go into the defense. Am I right about it? Yeah, right. Because that's a natural tendency of the flesh. Listen, brothers and sisters. You've got to learn how to override your natural te uh, fleshly tendencies if you're going to be successful in God's kingdom. You have to, uh, it, it, it has to be, and watch this now. It's not going to be natural when you first start, but keep, on, but keep at it. All right, you have to do. I come on, say something. Come on, say you have to do opposite. Yeah, do opposite. Of what your flesh tells you to do. Flesh tells you to do. If you want to succeed in God, <laughs> is this making sense to you all? All right. The next thing is attack, because guess what? If many of you all have some ghetto training or some ghetto background. If somebody's still on you, you got to hit them back. Am I right about it? Oh uh, uh, yeah. That's... It's just automatic. Ain't no thought about it. You hit me, I'm hitting you back. All right? So guess what? The, the mindset of Christ of turning the other cheek does not even come into our mind because guess what? While perception has went through that filter, look, first of all, they insulted me. Then guess what? They made an accusation. Now they didn't attack me. It's on and crack. All right? So guess what? Now I can't receive instruction. Now I can't receive correction. Now I can't give love or receive love because the devil has now got me to an attitude and mindset of revenge and attack and all. Somebody said, all up in the flesh. Yeah, all up in the flesh. And I need you to understand, you cannot show love when you're all up in the flesh. Excuse my language, but you can't do it, baby. You cannot. You cannot listen to God. You can't hear from God. You can't get correction or direction from God when you're caught up into your emotion. Here's what happens, because there's another thing that happens with your perception filters, because nowadays when you go and ask people or tell people about something to do something, the first thing that comes in their brain, because I don't want to put it, put it in there, because many people that's in the world today are not kingdom-minded. So I say kingdom-minded. Kingdom All right? And people that's not kingdom-minded, most of their thoughts on a daily basis is what's in it for me. All right? You know you're not kingdom-minded when you wake up all day, every day, and all you think about is yourself. All right, you're not kingdom-minded. See, kingdom-minded kingdom -minded people do prison ministry, go to hospitals, they witness to the sick, they go help people, they give money to the poor. Those are kingdom-minded people. Selfish people wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I need you to bless me. I need my money to increase. Lord, I need another job. Lord, I need you to touch my wife, touch my family, touch my God gives you a blessing. Okay, right. All right. See, when the devil gives you something that looks like a blessing, it's just bait. Why? It's there to trap you, to entangle you, to hook you. When you take a bite out of that worm, there's a hook in there. So yes, people that's not in God or not godly will do godly things. All right, but guess what? There's a hook there. There is a hidden agenda. They have an ulterior motive. Does that make sense? All right, people that's in the world don't just do good just to be doing good. They're trying to get something. All right, he's not telling you fine because you're looking good. He's telling you fine because he's trying to get something. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then you. So everybody that does those kingdom 
kingdom-minded things aren't necessarily kingdom-minded. No, everybody do kingdom-minded things don't do king, are not kingdom-minded. But guess what? All kingdom-minded people do kingdom-minded things. Does that make sense? Yeah. So why all kingdom-minded people do kingdom-minded things. But get the reason why I'm, I'm gonna ask your question really quickly. The reason why the devil does that is to keep you distracted and confused because we spend more time looking at people than we do looking at God. Does that make sense? And we have to learn how to get our eyes off of people because people will misguide you. Amen. Because guess what? Everybody in here has the ability to misguide somebody. That's why I tell people all the time, I said, I don't really think black people should be getting Oscars because ain't nobody, nobody have as much drama as colored folk. <laughs> Amen. We got some drama for you. We can have some drama at the drop of the hat. Huh? Go ahead and get caught doing something. <laughs> I, I mean, tears, you can get the tears, the lip moving, and the whole, you can do it. I mean, only, we're not even a director or are in a queue. Am I right about it? Amen. <laughs> All right. So your perception filters there. When somebody's having a conversation, yes, ma'am. Somebody else. I just have one last question about sure. the kingdom money. How do you, how do you make sure? Let me see. Um, when you think you're doing something kingdom minded, you're doing all of these things, thinking you're doing it good, but really, it doesn't mean anything because you're not yielded. Okay. How can how can you um, recognize that or and and you know? I guess you could change it by prayer, but how can you recognize and make sure it's not no hidden ulterior motive behind it? All right, the key thing to recognize whether you're kingdom minded or selfish is when, if you're doing things to bring attention to yourself. All right, that's a key indicator that you and the flesh, you and the flesh and the devil are talking. That's not the Holy Ghost, because see, if, when, if the Holy Ghost is moving, only God gets the glory. Okay. When, when, you, when, when people are speaking well of you, you got your name on the, on, on the, on the television screen and the mayor's giving you the keys to the city and every time you do something for somebody, you got to throw it up on Facebook and say, look at me, I'm feeding the, feeding, I'm feeding the homeless or I'm visiting the... You, come on, if you're doing something for God, you don't have to show up all the time. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. People that do things for God and God let them do it, they don't need no recognition. They, it's all about God and God alone. All right? Mother Teresa did a whole bunch of stuff you never saw on TV. She was about the business. Amen. Uh, Mother Gordon's, uh, Pastor Gordon's prison team goes to a lot of prisons. They do a lot of work in prison. That's not on television. But they're in prison all the time. Amen. Sometimes they're up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning to drive to a prison. The preacher all day to drive all the way back. Guess what? You don't get paid to do that. Amen. That's something that you do out of a kingdom mindset because you're concerned about the kingdom. Amen. Okay. Amen. Uh, so yes, a key indicator, sister, is if you start bringing attention to yourself and you're vaunting yourself and it's, it's all about you, your name has to be on the, on the paper or you got to be the, the head speaker, it's all about your honorarium, then your kingdom minded is selfish minded. You just, you just got to wrap up the kingdom because it's an access button. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right. Because yeah, so people will use good things to get saved. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's like you're doing all those things and not giving God the glory. Right, right here, down here, your perception of her filters. How does it benefit me? This is the first thing that comes to a person's mind that's not kingdom minded. How can I gain from this? Right? Pride. It's right there. It's on your handout. Covetousness. I got to get mine. Amen. Pastor Gordon, you have a handout? Uh, so, uh, Cheyenne, bring Pastor Gordon a hand out. Uh, covetousness, intemperance, because it, 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 it's, it's impatience, distractions. Watch this now. Rash judgments uh, is the process of thinking for immature Christians that are not kingdom minded. Watch this now. They are harassed by Satan and they tend to be ghetto. <laughs> All right. These are saints. Saints can be harassed by Satan. All right. Uh, anybody ever been on the, on the freeway and saw road rage? Yes. Two people in involved in road rage. Uh, what are they doing there? Antagonizing each other. <laughs> All right, this one flies up on and blows the horn, and then this one got to fly up and get in front. I, I mean, I've seen grown people do some silly stuff. All right, well, guess what they're doing? They're harassing each other. The other day, I was down at Burger King, and I saw these two harassing each other, and this one flipped this one guy off, and he tried to turn the corner, and when he turned the corner, he went up on that. There's a little median right there at Riverside and Valley, I think it is, right? He tried to jump that median, and he was stuck there. <laughs> And the other guy just drove, turned around and made the U-turn to your stat at him. And he just put his car in drive and put his car in reverse, trying to get up. He was all frustrated. 
Because now he's allowed the devil to get into a mindset. I said, now watch this now. He went from harassing the guy he had an issue with to tearing up his own car. The devil will tear your life up. Trying to get even or trying to get back at somebody that you perceive has done you wrong and they didn't even know what they were doing. Amen. This is what the Holy Ghost has revealed to me many, many times. Because you drive down the freeway getting frustrated with people and they don't even realize you're there. Yeah, right. Come on up in there. You come on, saints. You drive up to them and like, what are they? What in the world are they doing in that car? They ain't paying no attention. They are not. But then what happens is you take it all personal. Well, some pay attention to the one that's feeding by you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I'm saying, I'm just giving you an example. I can't, I'm not gonna cover every scenario on tonight. Okay. But when you come up to them because now you got angry and like, and you got to give, you, you a child of God, got a fish on your bumper, so you went to Harvest Festival. <laughs> And you roll your window down and say, get your head out of your behind. What's wrong with you? Move. Come and you're a Christian. Yeah, right. Yeah. How did that happen? You allowed the devil to arrest you. Got you all emotional. Now you acted unseemly. You're outside the will of God. Come on up here. You're not being a good witness. Guess what? You are a barrier to a godly relationship. Because guess what has happened? You just made looking godly look very unattractive. And the reason why many people cannot come to church and enjoy church is because they see you as the pattern of what godly life looks like, and they don't want any of that. You mean to tell me if I become a Christian, if I become saved and sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost, and baptized in Jesus' name, I'm going to be mean? Huh? You mean I'm going to argue, fuss, and fight? Come on, say ghetto. James chapter number four. Let's go. We gotta go. Let's go. Gotta, I got a lot to cover tonight. James chapter four. James chapter four. When you get there, say amen. When you see it on the screen, say I see it. Because I need you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, you need to change your perception filters. Your perception filters will stop you from gaining any kind of progress in life. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get the great, the best job you can have in your life. And because your, your perception filters have not been taken under the authority of the Holy Ghost, when your boss comes and tells you, I need this done, you'll get insulted. Oh, yeah. And then next thing you know, you'll think your boss is accusing you of not working. Well, you, I, 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 I didn't ask you all that. Look at them over there. They ain't doing nothing. I didn't ask you about them over there. I'm talking to you right here. Right? And so here you are. You're the Christian on the job. You got a Bible in your wall locker, but you're standing there in the middle of the warehouse giving the boss all kind of lip because all he wanted to do was bring you into his office to give you a promotion. But because you were in the flesh, and everything that people say to you is automatically received in a negative conversation because you're negative. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, when you, that's what I told you, Philippians chapter number four, verse number eight, take that and memorize it because, see, to, to the pure, all things are pure. When you, when you become a pure person in your mind, you receive things with a mindset of purity. You look for the bright side. You look for the good and folk. You're not always looking for the hair out of place. You know, I always look for the opportunity to critique and tear down. Not when you're good. When you're good, because see, when you're good, you have love and love covers faults. Love don't expose faults. Can I get one witness up in here? Yeah, right. All right, and so when, you, when you're full of love, you're looking for some reason to give somebody a compliment and not take something from them. Amen. It's quiet up in here. This is what James says. He says, from whence come at wars and fighting among you? Why are the saints fighting? Because you are in the flesh. You're not of God. Fighting and arguing is not of God. You are immature. You need to grow up. And see what's going on is you're, you're over here. You, you, you need somebody to convert you and change your diaper because you're just a big old baby. Oh, yeah, right. Huh? He says, he says, come they not his even of your lust. In other words, you started it. It came from you. And here's what the devil do. He'll have you looking at other people and say, it's their fault. They talked about my hair. No, they were trying to give you a compliment, but your brain said they were insulting you because you ain't saved. I am saved. Well, you sure don't have like any Christian I know. Oh, yeah. All right? The Bible says if any man be in Christ is a new preacher. You still act like that old man, that old fella talking. First thing you want to do is take your jacket off and ball your knuckles up, baby. I'm sorry. That ain't the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Come on up in here. Hey, Amen. I'm serious. I, I, I was sharing with some people a while back when I was in the street. Man, that, it was fight was instinctive. That was just automatic. You said something, it was a brick, it was something coming your way. Well, guess what? Now it's the word of God. Matter of fact, most of the time, I'm just going to smile at you and look at the devil. <laughs> yeah. Amen. My first instinct is not to go grab a pistol and shoot you. That's not my first instinct. Yeah. Amen. Matter of fact, it's not, even, it's not even a last instinct. That's no way in my brain. Why? Because God has changed my mind. But it's so you still got the same mind going on. You and the devil still got more going on than you and God. Because the devil should not be in your life. Amen. Not if you cast down every thought. Not if you resist the devil. He should be running. Mm -hmm. Alright, number, number two. What's it say? Four two. You lust and you have not. You kill and you desire and you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you have not asked. And here's what's going on. You fight, you fuss, you do all this stuff, and you still don't win. You still wind up being a loser. Now you don't have no friends. You went from three friends to no friends because you got a jacked up attitude. Don't nobody think like being around mean people, even you. Yeah, for real, yeah, right. <laughs> Amen. First Timothy, the sixth chapter, verse number, come on, first time to go high. I've been stuck in this rut long enough. Amen. And the reason why most of us are stuck is because we full of ourselves. Be careful, my brother and my sister, when can't nobody teach you anything. You know everything. This is what the Bible says. He is what? Proud, knowing everything. The Bible says you proud knowing nothing. But doting about questions and strife of words, we're all coming envy, strife, railing, envy, surmising. You come up with your own surmises, but, but because guess what? You 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 receiving things through those filters. Those filters says they're attacking you, uh, they're lying on you, uh, they're they, they're criticizing you, uh, and, and because you're full of pride and you're immature, you take everything personal. Everything is personal when you're not kingdom minded. When you're kingdom minded, they're attacking God in the kingdom. When you're not kingdom minded, everybody's attacking you. Okay, all right. Huh? They sit in your chair. That's an attack. I was sitting in that chair last Sunday. <laughs> why, 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 don't, why I don't get to lead my song? Well, if I don't want to pray when I want to pray, I don't want to pray no more. Okay. Baby, you're a child. Grow up. Amen. Grow up. Someone say grow up. Grow up. All right. <laughs> number four. Number, number five. Number five. It says what? Perverse, disputing of men. Of corrupt, what's this? What kind of mind? Corrupt. Corrupt minds and destitute of truth. There, there's no truth in them. And see, when you're left by, the, by, by Satan, I need you to understand that my brother and my sister, the Bible says there is no truth in you. So even the truth you have inside of you is a lie. What are you talking about? Because your truth has a string attached. It has a condition attached. It's all about you. That's why you're so offended because it's all about you. You wanted to do you. They won't let me be myself. You ain't supposed to be alive. Your flesh is supposed to be crucified. Am I right about it? Right. Amen. How many times you got to resurrect that same flesh that beat you up last time? Every single year you make a New Year's resolution. And every single year you go back and resurrect that same flesh you said you was getting rid of. Mm -hmm. You go back to the same people like the Bible says, like a dog returning back to his vomit. That's nasty. I'm serious, brothers and sisters. One of the nastiest things I ever saw in my life was a dog vomit. <laughs> Walk away. And then come back and eat it. Come on, say that's nasty. Come on, say that's nasty. Well, guess what you do? Every time you come to church and you praise God and you say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and then you walk out and somebody look at you wrong and you get an attitude, you're a dog eating your own vomit. It's quiet up in here. I never saw it that way. The devil likes you blind. He loves ignorance. Huh? He likes you doing foolish stuff. I got to move on. I, I, that's a whole lot. Number, what's the name of six? Number six, number six. Come on, come on, come on. Six, six. But godliness, what, 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 what,
study. I don't have to preach. Amen. Somebody said, well, Pastor Nolan, how are you a bishop and, and, and you let somebody else take your church? I said, this ain't my church. Jesus Christ died for this church. Amen. I'm just a servant that serves God like we're supposed to serve God. Yes, this word and action does not belong to Victor Nolan. Yeah, you gave it to me. Amen. You, none of y'all don't belong to me. I love you all. I'm serious I do. But y'all don't belong to me. So I can't walk around and say, they're my members. <laughs> I've heard people say this crazy stuff. <laughs> my church, my members. Don't be talking to my members, doc. You got your cotton pick in mind. What cross you died on? Huh? Let's go. Number six, number seven. Number seven. What's it say? The Bible. So the Bible says, for we brought nothing into this world. All these, we got these important folk now. And we believe that if I'm not the one teaching, I, this one sister actually told me, she says, uh, Pastor Nolan, um, the reason why I don't come to Sunday school is because the Sunday school teachers are not as good as me. Oh. <laughs> they can't teach me that. I said, the devil is a liar. You're so full of yourself. Why would you let the devil put that in your brain? The kingdom ought to teach you nothing. Well, maybe, guess what? You may not need Sunday school, but Sunday school needs you. Yeah, that's right, yeah. They may need your insight and your wisdom. And they may need your direction. But now you're caught up in the flesh because you ain't the one teaching. You may not have a word right now. <laughs> Amen. See, part of being members, many members in the body of Christ, you got to realize some Sundays, sometimes, some seasons, you may not even get used. But guess what? You're still just as valuable. Amen. You're still just as essential because guess what? You've got to be ready to go when your time is called. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you drive around the city of Fontana and Colton, you'll see police and fire departments all every few miles. And many of them, you don't see nothing going on. But guess what? When a fire comes, they come into action. What if they were like church folk? Well, they don't need me. I'm just going to take my uniform off and I'm just going to go watch the lake until it's clean. Whatever. Yeah. Right? Because you don't think you, your, your gifts and your talents are being utilized because you're a child. Because guess what? Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When you're filled with God's spirit, you can walk into a situation and walk into a room and say, this house needs this. God, now you become an intercessor. Some of the most powerful preachers I know are preachers that had 10 or 20 people in the back room that nobody ever saw. But while they were doing the conference and the crusade, those intercessors were in the back room praying for them. Billy Graham didn't do great things by himself. They had intercessors. If you look down all church history and all the church movements and every great revival, those people had great men and women back there praying. Come on up in here. And see, if you're waiting to be on the stage, the stage is not where the anointing is. Amen. Amen. The anointing starts in that prayer room. It's quiet up in here. But see, when you're all up in the flesh, it's about being on the stage to be seen. And I don't even know when the pulpit went from being a pulpit to a stage anyway. <laughs> But we brought nothing in this world, and in a certain we would carry nothing out. Listen, right, number eight, number eight, what does it say? And having food and raiment, let us be there with the content. Number nine. But they that will be rich fall into what? Temptation. You got folk that want to be rich. I'm going to share this with you, our brothers and sisters. I was so offended. The other day I was on, I was, uh, on Facebook, and they had uh, Kenneth Copeland, and they had some other, one of those other... Uh, Jesse the Planets, you know, with these, these multi-millionaire prophet liars and these uh, prosperity folk. And they said, well, the reason why uh, they have to have a jet airplane, their own private jet, is because they don't want to be in the presence of all these regular folk full of demons. Because the folk on the airplane, they got demons. And my thing was this, if you call yourself a man of God with all this power, you should be on that airplane casting those devils out. Can I get one witness up in here? Did you read Luke, the fourth chapter, verse number 18? God did not tell you to go hide yourself in your first class limousine. Yeah. He didn't tell you to hide yourself in your first class airplane. No, we're supposed to go out into the highways and byways and compel. We're supposed to go out and let our light shine. Your light can't shine in your private jet. Oh. It's quiet up in here. <laughs> Amen. I heard the same people say, I, I, I let my armor bearer go into the room because it may be demons in there. You've got to go in your own room. You, why would you send your armor bearer to do your job? Your name must be Saul and not David. Because David didn't have an armor bearer. David had the power and the authority of God. Lord Jesus, up in here. I feel like preaching up. i got to close. Number 10, what's it say? 
The Bible says, well, for the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. It's all you think about is money, trying to get paid, trying to get rich, trying to come up. That's the only thing on your mind. Because you're selfish, you're not kingdom minded. Kingdom minded is, uh, yes, I, I would love to be a billionaire, not for Victor Nolan. I don't need a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah, but right. I would love to have some man. People call me, Pastor, I need a place to stay. I need to have some education. I need a car. Guess what? If we had that in the ministry, bam, we have that. I don't need no five bedroom house. I already got one of those. I'm trying to get a two bedroom house. <laughs> Amen. I'm getting old. Again, that stuff gets old trying to have big stuff. Can I get a witness up in here? What you need with a big old mansion is only two people in the house. That's crazy. <laughs> Who are you trying to impress? Amen. I don't need a Beyonce spread or a JC spread. I'm not JC or Beyonce. I'm trying to serve Jesus. I'm trying to serve the kingdom. Yes, right. Can I get one witness up in here? And watch this now. And, and we have people that's preaching to your spirit, and you like hearing that because your spirit likes. Somebody telling you, well, I just sow a seed, God gonna meet your need. You better get saved. You better seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You better put God first and stop putting talking about yourself. All right. Amen. We, 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 the, the world now has a selfish gospel. Everybody's trying to get a word. Oh, I need to get a word from the Lord. You should have got a word before you got here. Amen. You're a preacher. You should, you should already have been in the word, in prayer. You should already have been, I, I need to pray, see to lift up. You should have already been lifted up before you got here. You come here to serve, not to get served. What happened to the servants? Lord Jesus. The Bible says they, 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 they do what? They have erred from the faith, come on, and because they got distracted, and they pierced themselves through many sorrows. All these get-rich-quick schemes. Amen. Brother Roman commented there about one of our pastors. He said, he said and he was just, he was weeping. He said, man, he said, let that pastor know. Don't get caught up in money. Huh? Don't get caught up in money. Don't get caught up in because let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, say if God wants you to have it, you won't have it. All right, let's go. My time is ticking. Time is ticking. Y'all can do it. The kingdom mind definition and the protocol definition. I'm going to cover this as if we have any time at the end. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number four, verse number three. Ephesians chapter number four. Ephesians chapter number four, verse number three. When you get there, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Ephesians chapter number what? Four. What verse? Three. What does it say? It says, endeavoring to do what? Come on, say work at it. Come on, it's, it's, come on, it's not easy getting along with people. Come on, can I share the secret with you? It's not even easy getting away. Some of y'all ain't easy to get along with. Can I get one witness up in here? Yeah, yeah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. I'm not the easiest person to get along with. The easiest person to get along with. But guess what? That's what the Bible says, endeavoring to keep the unity. You have to work at it. Come on, say it's a job. But guess what? And there's no job. Is too hard for God. Keep the unity of the spirit. Ross is not in the bond of what? Peace. The bond of fighting. Peace. The bond of peace. When you start, when you endeavor to work to keep things going together, then peace comes in a situation. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. High blood pressure, sugar diabetes, cancer, sleepless nights, ulcers, and all this stuff is going on because the body of Christ has no peace. Why doesn't the body of Christ have any peace? Because the Bible says I will keep them in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me, right? Well, guess what? Fuck mind ain't on Jesus. Fuck mind is on everything else but Jesus. Most of the time, folk are sitting in church trying to think about what they're going to do about the church. Hell yeah. Or what somebody said to them or didn't say. Or how they treated me or how they looked at me. Who they think they are. I, I ain't been saved that long. You ain't been saved at all. <laughs> huh? Can I get one witness up in here? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God that are pulling down the strongholds. When you get into the flesh, you get into Satan's territory, not God's. We don't fight with our flesh. We fight with the word of God. Matter of fact, the Bible I say says stand still and see the salvation. That means you stand still and watch God fight your battle. We should sing a song in the sanctified church. Victory shall be mine if I hold my peace. Can I get one witness up in here? And the reason why saints can't win any battles is because we talk too much. 
Huh? He said, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, victory, victory shall be mine. Come on, number, number four. What's the next verse? What's it say? There's what? There's one Lord, one faith, there's one baptism. There is no, there's no schisms or separations in God. Then why are there schisms and separations in people? Because you're not endeavoring to keep the unity. Because all you're doing is thinking about yourself. Because all you think of, you've got your struggles going on. You, because every time somebody says something, you receive it wrong. You process it wrong. You understood it wrong. Now you're wrong. Huh? Now that's why you got all these, you got 30,000 different denominations in the United States. 30,000. How do you get 30,000 different denominations out of one Lord, one faith, and one baptism? How do you get all that, all those different folk out of one Bible? Because somebody's full of flesh, somebody's full of pride, and somebody's full of themselves. Amen. Because on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one place on one accord. There were no denominations in the book of Acts. Amen. Well, if there were no denominations when Jesus was walking around, then why are there them now? Because you got Satan leading. Somebody needs to be in charge. I need to be the bishop. I need to be the apostle, the chief apostle. I need my name on the paper. Next verse, what does it say? What does it say? Go ahead and take those little boys home. No. It says, the one God and the Father of all who is above all and through all. And guess what? And in you all. And guess what? If God is inside of us, I'm not fussing, brothers and sisters. If God is inside of us, we will be united. There's no division in God. Can I get one witness up in here? Number seven, what does it say? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But unto every one of us is the given the grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Next verse. Wherefore. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led what? He led what? So if, if, if God led captivity captive, that means God has brought the authority of Satan under the control of the Holy Ghost. So if God brought the authority of Satan under the control of the Holy Ghost, why does the devil still have control over your life? Because you gave it to him. The devil has no authority but with the, what authority you gave. He ain't that bad. The Bible says he goes around as a roaring lion. It, it, it does not say he is a roaring lion. He's an imitation of life. Huh? He's a toothless lion with laryngitis at best. Huh? All he is is a figment of your imagination. You making him bigger than he actually is. Amen. Because you're not walking in the power of God. You're walking. See, here's the thing about selfish people. Selfish people walk under their own power and their own force. That's why you have folk in church frustrated. How are you frustrated when you have the Holy Ghost? Because it's you operating and not God. The Holy Ghost don't get frustrated. The Holy Ghost don't get tired. Can I share this with you? The Holy Ghost does not get taken off guard. You can't surprise the Holy Ghost. Well, I passed up no one. I ain't know they was going to do that. Well, you was not walking in prayer. What was your prayer life? Well, a pastor told me to try to pray an hour. That's just, I, I, don't, have that, I don't have that kind of time. Everybody, everybody didn't like him. Yeah. Huh? I don't know. I'm going to find a time to pray for it. You find, well, can, let me share this with you all before we get to our next verse. You find time to suffer and complain. Can I get one witness up in here? You, you got time to get up on the phone and tell somebody how, how many problems you have. Girl, let me tell you what happened now. Huh? On Sunday, somebody called me, ain't called me in three months. All of a sudden, they heard about some mess. Now you want to call. No, don't call me with no mess. You can't call me when we're on, on the mountaintop. Don't call in the valley. Can I get one witness up in here? I'm sorry, brothers. I'm not miserable. I'm going to share this with you all, brothers and sisters. I'm not miserable. I refuse to be miserable. If you want to be miserable, you be miserable by yourself. Amen. Amen. I'm going higher in the name of Jesus. Can I get one witness up in here? And some of y'all guests should be tired of foolishness and simple-minded folk that don't want to do anything in life but be negative. Amen. Everything that comes out of their mouth is negative. Huh? Nothing ever positive. Lord, next verse, come on. Number nine, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, that he didn't ascend, but he was also the descendant first into the Lord, Paul, and the Lord. In other words, they're talking about Jesus Christ who went down and took control of the devil. 
Guess what? The same Jesus Christ that went into the grave and took control of the devil, went that descended into the lower parts, we call it hell. Guess what? That same spirit, the Holy Ghost, is inside of you. That means the devil is under your authority. So we should not be walking around here as men and women of God in fear of the devil. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. Um, anybody can lay hands on I'm not tripping. Because, because guess what? The Holy Ghost is greater than them now. Amen. But I'm not going to walk into no prayer service and Tyler Perry is not going to lay hands on me. Amen. No, I'm not, no, I'm not afraid that I'm going to walk out with a demon. I'm not. That's not a fear. But guess what? I don't even want the appearance of me and him on the same page. We don't have, we don't have nothing in common. Can I get one witness up in here? Oh, Jesus. Number 10. What's it say? He that did say the what? He's the same. He's the same. What? Where? For all him is that what? He got everything covered. He did all this on purpose. First Corinthians 14 chapter verse number 33. First Corinthians 14 chapter verse number 33. First Corinthians 14 chapter verse number 33. When you get there, say amen. We need to turn, we need to elevate ourselves. We need to go higher. I, uh, brothers and sisters, it, it to me, honestly, it gets so frustrating to see people living beneath their privilege. I don't know about you, but I can't stand the devil. I don't even like to, I don't even like seeing him. I sure don't like seeing him and seeing him inside of folk that go to church. Why you don't go to church and go to hell? Huh? Why come to church and stay by? Huh? You're a hellion to come to church, you're a hellion when you leave church. Cast all that stuff on, leave all that crap on the altar. Huh? You come in here weighted down, come and say, Lord, take it all. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 14, chapter verse number 33, what does it say? For God is not the author of confusion. So if there's confusion going on, guess what? God is not in it. Amen. Don't tell me that God is leading you when you confuse. And you bring a confusion into a ministry. Can I get one witness up in here? Amen. Amen. Well, I believe the Holy Ghost is leading, but no, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's your ghost, but nothing holy about that ghost. Amen. That is your spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe God talking to me. No, God's not going to have you doing something differently than what the Holy Ghost needs to be done and the place. Well, I don't believe that God only talks to the pastor. He does not. I know that's absolute truth. But guess what? There's only one pastor at a time. Amen. Anything with two heads is a freak. That's a circus, not a church service. Can I get one witness up in here? For God's not going to offer confusion, but a peace as in all churches of saints. So and here's what happens. In all churches where saints are, there's peace and unity. There's no confusion. Y'all looking at me like I lost my mind. Well, I, I see some, some disunity and some lack of peace. Well, guess what? There are some, there's some angst mixed in with the saints. Right. Somebody got saved by... Somebody got an honorary doctorate degree. They never went to college. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17. Hebrews chapter 13. Get a few more verses and we'll get this in you all because it's time to make progress. It's time to go high. Hebrews chapter what? 13. 13. Anybody on Facebook got any questions or comments? Amen. Something. Amen. Let me know you're out there. And he says, Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 17. When you get there, say Amen. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says to obey them that have rule over you. That means there's somebody that God has placed over you. Even though the Holy Ghost is talking to you. And you and the Holy Ghost have a good communication. That's fine. But guess what? You still have somebody over you. Can I get one witness up in here? Obey them that rule over you and do what? And submit yourself. That word that word that y'all can't stand. <laughs> Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, and they must, and what's this, as they must give an account, God's going to talk to them about you. Pastor Nolan, how did you let Sister Green get away with that without you correcting her? Well, you know, Lord, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. She was kind of going through something at the time, and I felt like that wasn't the appropriate time to say. <laughs> no, you was leaning to your own understanding. Huh? You were figuring and analyzing. You actually started being Jesus. Can't stay that long. <laughs> oh, yeah, they may have given account that they may do it. What's that? They may do it with joy and not with grief, for that's unprofitable to you. You don't want. You don't want to grieve the spirit of your leader. 
They don't even like saying you coming. Baby, you are a baby. You are a problem. Amen. Everybody withers up and moves away when you walk in the room. That's nothing godly about that. That's not anointing. Proverbs 5th chapter, verse number 13. Proverbs 5th chapter, verse number 13. Proverbs 5th chapter, verse number what? When you get there, say amen. The Bible says what? Are you there? It says, have not, what says, and, and have not obeyed the voice. This is what it says. You have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor have they that, that are, are stubborn like goats. Yeah. You can't teach him anything. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, right. On Sunday, we have, yeah. anyway. <laughs> That's okay, go ahead. In, in the church, I, I shared with this, this with you all before. The pastors, uh, they assign people. Now, the way it works in the church orchestration organization, and you have people that's consecrated, you have people that's appointed, you have people that's ordained, you have people that's licensed. Each one of those is a different level. Consecrated people appoint people. All right? Ordained people, they appoint people as well. No, okay. All right? Licensed people, they get to work with people that have been appointed by consecrated people. Licensed people get to assist people. They don't get to appoint anybody. You're not in charge of anybody. You just have a minister's license or a deaconess missionary's license or whatever. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, that's called chain of command and structure. Now, in God's chain of command and structure, guess what, brothers and sisters, you need to realize God has an order. Somebody say order. order. So, like I shared with you all on Sunday, if I tell so-and-so I need this done, that's not them talking, that's them talking for me. No, I you. Amen. So, Brian is not in charge of you. Brian is operating as an appointed assignment from the pastor. Does that make sense? All right. Well, here's what happens. When you reject the instruction from the deacon, now don't just use it for an example, you're rejecting the instruction from the pastor, and when you reject the instruction from the pastor, you're rejecting the instruction from God. Because God is talking to the pastor who is watching for your soul to give your word for the body to make the whole body go higher. Does that make sense? I need you to understand, pastors don't just go to sleep at night and think about ways to mess with you. <laughs> Pastors go to sleep at night with you on their mind and the whole church on their mind. Matter of fact, a pastor that's a real pastor have you on their mind all the time. All right, you get to go home and be about, just think about you. <laughs> Pastors don't have that luxury. Okay, well, give them the luxury. You get to go out and have your life on vacation. You get to go on vacation. When a pastor goes on vacation, he takes you with him. You get to go to the movies and enjoy yourself. When the pastor goes to the movies, he's eating popcorn and soda, and he's thinking about you. <laughs> Seriously, when I go anywhere, I take a notepad with me because I can be right in the good old, good old movie. And my wife says, oh, you got another revelation? Yep, I got another revelation. I'm going to write this down right now. I'm going to go home and get me some scripture for this one. Bam! All right, because that's what a leader does. Okay, I can't stay that long. First Corinthians 16, chapter, verse number 16. 1 Corinthians 16, chapter, verse number 16. The Bible says that you submit yourself. Look at that word again. I need you to understand, brothers and sisters, you will never be able to progress in God, walk in the anointing and authority of God, if you don't know how to submit to the leadership that God has gave you. Okay. Wow. Amen. It's quiet up in here. I know y'all don't like saying it. I really do. But br brothers and sisters, trust me, that's the reason why you're not blessed long. Because you make up your own rules and you do your own thing. You don't need nobody telling you what to do. I talk to God for myself. Huh? I don't need nobody in my business. That you submit yourself unto such as to everyone that helpeth us with the labor. And this is what the, this verse is saying. So if I gave the instructions to Brother Brian, Brother Brian is just helping me do the labor. If I tell Sister Levine,
Vita, Vita, Vita gonna tell him, it's not Vita telling you what to do. I don't need no lady. Okay. That's not a lady telling you what to do. That's a woman's voice using my voice yeah. to tell you what to do. <laughs> Amen. They think it's her telling them what to do. because That's because they're in the flesh. They're back to the perception filters because they have not gotten through the childish stage. Like I told you, if God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through you, no. a woman or a child. Okay. Don't put God in a box. You limit yourself. Amen. This is what drove me out. Why can't a woman tell you anything to do everywhere in the world but a church? No. <laughs> huh? You're at the bus station and a woman tell you you're in the wrong line. Okay, no problem. No way. <laughs> you come to church and a woman say, brother, you're in the wrong line. Oh, you know, you know, don't turn it here. You see how the devil mess you up? They use that scripture. That's what well, guess what? If, listen to brothers and sisters. If the woman is wrong, fine. You ain't got to get all into you. You get your, get your stuff all in a bunch. Go pray for the woman. Yeah. Pray that demon off of her if you think she got a demon. Okay. Amen. But you sit up there trying to go lose all it. Now you just brought attention to yourself. And now you, you've lost your testimony. Because Christians don't fight. That's not godly. We pray. We fight in warfare. Our warfare is in our prayer room. We don't roll up our sleeves and get our, car, get our squab on. My fight days are over. When I fight you, I'm using the word of God and the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, most times I'm just going to step back and smile. <laughs> huh? Because you don't really understand what you're doing. The devil got you confused. All right. Make sense? Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse number 21. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse number 21. And for anyone that was not here, that that that, that y'all need to get, I made 20 copies. Give, give, give. I made some, made some, I can make more. Need the email, I'll send it to you. Commit yourself one, what? To another, in the what? You're referencing, and you're referencing God, not the person. I don't need your submission, trust me. I don't get no big old ego because you submitted. No, no you no. get blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I've done all that. When I was 20 years old, I was a drill instructor. I had a hundred people that was totally follow all my commands. All right. Amen. <laughs> if I say go left, they all go left. Amen. If I, when I was in a gang member in the streets, I'd tell people to go do something, they did it. It was automatic. I don't, need, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get no big ego from coming to church telling you what to do. I'm giving you advice to be a blessing so you can bless your life and be better. Amen. It don't, it's not going to stroke my ego if you do what I say to do. It's going to bless you when you're instant and in season and out of season, though. Submit yourself one to another in the fear of what? All right, Peter, 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 Peter. First Peter, the fifth chapter, verse number five. We've got a few more verses. Bear with me, saints. We've got to get this in there because, saints, we're trying to grow. And the only way we're going to grow is through getting the Word of God, applying the Word of God to our lives. Come on, so I need the Word. Just what the Bible says now. The Bible says, likewise, you younger, does it, what's that word again? Submit. Again! Pastor Nolan, how many times you want to say this word until you get it in your mind? You cannot develop godly relationships without submission. Amen. And you cannot have a relationship with the Holy Ghost without submission. You and the Holy Ghost got to be on one accord, but guess what? He's the boss. Mm -hmm. right. you, you don't have a council session with the Holy Ghost, and, and we're going to we're gonna come to a mediation. And, no, you don't have an understanding with God. God says, yes, you say, okay. Where he lead me, I'll follow. Does it make sense? Likewise, you younger men, younger women and men. I, I'm sorry, I put that in there, added that, forgive me. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, that means the senior person in authority. Ye all of you subject one to another, and be clothed with what? Oh, come on now, we got full of pride, arrogance folk in church today. The Bible said be clothed in humility, so when they see you, they see somebody that's humble. Humble people don't have any issue with submission. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. If your brother can't tell you what to do, the Holy Ghost sure can't tell you what to do. Amen. Right. Amen. Your brother that you can see, you can't have respect for. How you gonna have respect for a Holy Ghost you cannot see? You see how it's all related? And so the devil said, well, I'm respecting God, but I don't respect you. No, you don't respect God. Because the Bible says, if 
you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He said, what is the love? Love your God, love your God that God with all that mind, body, and your soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Is that right? He says, yeah, all of you be subject one to another, be clothed in humility, for God does what? God resisted. The what? Right. See, that's why you can't be blessed. If you look around, things are going around because God's resisting you. God's resisting you because you don't know how to submit. I don't need nobody telling me what to do. No need nobody in my business. Why I got to talk to him? Why I got to talk to her? Why I don't need nobody's permission. I'm grown. Why I got to ask you where I want to go? If I want to go, I, can, I shouldn't be able to just go. You no. should, guess what? If you are a sinner, servant, Satan, yes, you are great. You're right. You can do what you want to do. But when you become a child of God, you have to learn order and submission. You just can't do what you want to do when you want to do it. It's quiet up in here. No, true, true. It's quiet. There's no right. Uh, and brothers and sisters, you can fight with the Spirit if you want to, but you're never going to progress in God when you, have a, when you have a problem with humility and submission. You're not going anywhere. And any way you're going to get it is because you have obtained it by your flesh. And anything you obtain by the flesh is going to be temporary and it will be frustrating. Guess what? Because it's not going to last. And then you'll find yourself frustrated and angry with God when God says, I didn't give you that in the first place. You work your magic. That's how you got it. Because if it was up to me, you would have never been a deacon. But you got some money, and you know some people, and your daddy was the head deacon somewhere. Now they made you a deacon because your daddy was a deacon. I'm just using it for an example. Don't, don't look at Deacon Brian funny. <laughs> All right, because you got folk in church, they have positions because of who they know, not who they know. Did you catch it? All right. The Bible says he resisted the proud of him. This is what the, this is what the Bible says. Says, and he given grace to the humble. Somebody say blessings. Bless. See, blessings is going to come when you humble yourself. Somebody say humble yourself. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 3rd chapter verse number 14. 2 Thessalonians the 3rd chapter verse number 14. We've got to go there real quickly. This is what the Bible says. Y'all ready for this one? Alright. Y'all ready? And if any man obey not our God, obey. You mean to tell me I got to obey a man? This is Paul talking to the church of Thessalonica. What does he say? If any man obey not our word by this epistle, that means this letter that I've written, I'm writing this letter of instruction. I'm telling you what I want done. It's just like when the pastors have a meeting, they have a memo, he, this is what I want done. That's the epistle. Note that man, that means look at him. That's right, that's right. Stare at him. Amen. Put it in your brain. I don't want to be like them. This is what the Bible says. And have no what? Company with him. So why? So he can. Come on, read the Bible. Because guess what? You want people to know when they're not following God and submission to God and not walking in humility that there's something wrong with you, man. Why? Because we love them. Not because we want to shun them. No, we're trying to get them better. See, when you're shaming, and, and I know in the world these days, we got all kind of bad connotations. We talk about shame. Shame has a great value. Yeah. Back when I was a kid, you did something wrong. They said, man, you should be shaming yourself. Mm. Now we tolerate everything. And so, oh, it's all right. I love you. You don't love me when you stand by and watch me do wrong. The Bible tells you in the word as if you do, you see your child doing wrong, you see somebody doing wrong, and you don't discipline them, you hate them. The Bible says have no confidence with them so they can be ashamed. When people that don't follow the wills of God, they should be ashamed of themselves. Philippians, the second chapter, verse number 12. Got two more verses, and I'm gonna let y'all go. I know there's a whole lot of work for y'all in one night, but brothers and sisters, it's time to go. I'm telling you, we we hit we hitting it in overdrive. Amen. Amen. You've been pampered long enough. Huh? The Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always did what? Obey. What? Obey. Obey not as in my presence only. And this is what I'll talk, share with you all on Sunday. The pastor should not have to be there for you to do the right thing. Amen. 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 When I was the most serious, brothers and sisters, we were raised to respect our parents. We did right even when mama was around. 
And if we got ready to think about doing something wrong, we would look around and make sure that nobody that knew mama or mama was nowhere in the vicinity. Why? Because we had respect for authority. Right. Now these, these bald-faced jokers would do something bad right in their mother's face. And then tell their mother, you better not say nothing. I've, I've seen children, 13 and 14 years old, talk to their mother like their mother had a tail. Man, I, I tell my wife, some of these folk ain't black, baby. Because see, in my day, my mother would have knocked you in the next week. That's right. Said, boy, I'll slap the black off of you. That's right. Huh? Matter of fact, you, you even act like you're going to wrinkle up your face. You better straighten up your face right now. That's right. Amen. Matter of fact, they hit you before they even say something. Bam! <laughs> Seriously. Now you, brothers and sisters, you're not developing a loving relationship when you allow folk to act unseemly. You need to call that thing and say, no, uh-uh, stop. Amen. Come on, say, take authority over the devil. Don't give any place to the devil. There should not be any shadow of turning. No deviation in anything you do as a child of God. Nowhere. Somebody say no compromise. No compromise. See, understand this, brothers and sisters. Compromise leads to compromise. Then when you start compromising, you're like, you know, it's all right. It's a, this is what I hear all the time. It's a new day. This, the pastor, this is the 21st century. This, this is 2017. Well, the same God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I'm God and I change not. Why are we changing? Because we don't have the authority to walk in. We're not walking the authority because we don't know how to obey. Not in my presence only, but not, now much more in my absence. In other words, you should be more obedient when the pastor's not around. Amen. This is how the pastor wants it done. This is what the devil put in your brain because you have those bad filters. He ain't, he ain't that but a man. No. Oh. <laughs> he ain't God. Huh? <laughs> I'm serious. I walked in the room the other day. All the chairs crooked. Nothing in the place where it's supposed to be. No good well. Pastor don't like crooked chairs. <laughs> no. Why he ain't here? It, don't, it shouldn't make a difference. If you walk into the room and the room is not the way God says it, put it the way God says it so God can bless you. There's no confusion in God. And well, it, it ain't that serious. It is that serious. Because if you deviate in a little, you're, de you're deviating a lot. See, if you're faithful over little things, he'll make you rule over many. It's quiet up in here. See, y'all don't understand how everything is related. Huh? When you do things, it's a symptom or a symbol of what you made up. It's a character flaw. And God don't bless people with character flaws. <sighs> see, see uh, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. i got to close. But see, David was anointed, but he had a character flaw. And that's how David found himself in Psalm 51. He said, create in me the right spirit. He said, he said renew the right spirit within me, right? He said, wash me thoroughly with his stuff. He said, wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Right? Why? Because he realized that even though he was anointed, he had a character flaw. Because it was a character flaw that made him look over that window and see somebody else wipe and take her. It's quiet up in here. See, the reason why David was a man out of God's own heart is because he, when he recognized he had a character flaw, he cried about it. He didn't do like Saul and everybody else was going to try to hide it. I ain't do it. Walk in the room, everybody fighting. You over there sitting down. Pastor, I don't know why they fight. I ain't did nothing. You the one started it with your jacked up attitude. <laughs> As I'm serious, uh, Pastor Gordon, I was, I was praying about this situation on Sunday, and what the Holy Ghost revealed to me was I'm some of the very people. Don't throw the rock and hide your hand. Throw, your hand. <laughs> because the Holy Ghost will find you out. Mm -hmm. I got three minutes, I got to close. He says, no, he says, much more in absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the reason I bring this up is because people are quoting scripture, but if you're going to quote the scripture, quote the whole thing. Yeah. And do not quote stuff out of context and try to apply it to your situation. Come on. Come on. Out of context does not apply. Amen. You need the context for the content, you need the content for the revelation, you need the revelation for the application. Does that make sense? And see, you got these folks doing all this hopscotch all over the Bible, reading the A part of the verse. Now, let me tell you something. If God wrote the verse, he wrote the whole verse. That's right. Don't quote A if you're not going to quote B. Don't quote 
two if you're not going to quote three. Okay. Can I get one witness up in here? Give me the whole counsel. Oh boy, oh boy. All right. First Timothy, first Timothy, fifth chapter. Uh, oh, you know what? I, I'm out of time. Romans 12 chapter, verse number 10. Romans chapter, chapter thank you. Y'all all right, man. Y'all put yourself up for a rape, a rape. Oh, oh. I'll take it back. All right, be kind. <laughs> 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 the Bible says to what? Be kindly and affectionate. Can I share it with your kind, affectionate folk? Don't fight. Listen to me. If you're kind and affectionate, and you said dust, when you're supposed to say dog, you know what I'm doing. Like, girl, you said dust. You're supposed to say dog. <laughs> I'm not going to hit you. You said dust. Right? Philip that's in love don't talk to each other like that. Amen. I'm sorry, but I, I, I love my wife. If, 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 every time I made a mistake, she came in and said, Why you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. No, I'm not going to happy hour, Brother Roman. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to come home till I'm sauced up. <clears throat> Can I get one witness up in here? <laughs> See, that's why they have happy hour, because folks need some time to be happy for a moment. <laughs> Amen. Because people don't have kindness or affection. <laughs> listen, listen, I got to close. But going home and going to church should be something you look forward to. Amen. I don't know, I'm sorry, this is God's and the truth. I look so forward to seeing you guys. I'm serious. I look forward to going home. I am so serious. I mean, I could be working, and what's on my mind is in a few more minutes, I'm going to be at home. <laughs> Amen. There's no better feeling to me when I walk in the room and I see my wife there. Wow. Same thing when I come to church. There's no better feeling when I come and I see your face, whether it's round up or smiling. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather see you smile, but I'm just glad to see your face. Can I get one witness? <laughs> Here's the, here's the problem though. Some of you all, you gotta raise your hand. Can't stand seeing nobody but yourself. You don't even like yourself. Can't stay there long, Lord Jesus. Where my paper at? He says, be <laughs> kindly affectionate one to another. With what? Brotherly With what? Brotherly Where brothers and sisters don't lust after each other. Oh Lord. No. And honoring and doing what? Preferred. Again, I saw her this one quoted, but you only quoted part of it. You can't prefer or put somebody in the right place or let somebody go first if you're not walking in love. <coughs> Last one I got to close. First Peter, third chapter, verse number seven. We got to do most of them today, saints. First Peter, third chapter, verse number seven. Wow, ain't that something? <sighs> because see, the Bible, we, we want to quote the scripture. This one, I'm going to share this one with my brothers with y'all in this church. Because people always want to tell, you, to tell me what, what a woman's place is. No way. <laughs> right? But we want a woman to be a man in the world, come on. but a woman in the church. Come on. Alright? The same men that come and tell me what a woman can't do, they have their wife out there working and doing all kinds of stuff, paying all the bills. Can I get one with this? Don't look at me that tone of voice. Huh? The woman out there taking the pick ticket, paying all the bills, doing all the responsibility, and, 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 and when she come to church, well, she just a woman, and a woman can't. Well, let me tell you something. If she gonna be a woman, let her be a woman all the way. Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. You go work. Amen. And you provide. That's right. You be since you the head, you go go ahead and head, head up every bill and every responsibility. Since you're going to let the devil sit there and put that in your brain. But I'm serious. I've seen these Pharisees. They want the woman to be a woman coming up in here in church, but a man in the world. You can't have it both ways. Amen. Can I get one witness up in here? Yeah. If you don't quote scripture to me, quote scripture that works for me in church and in the world. Right. <laughs> God's word is not selective. He don't have just, just a church word. <laughs> God's word is applicable everywhere. Okay. Amen. I'm serious, doctor. We have folks that have church. Well, you know, that's, that's just in church. We at home now. No, the oh. devil is a lie. You don't take this on and off. <laughs> You're holy all the time. Can't stay there long. Likewise, your husband do well with them according to what? Knowledge. You got to have some knowledge, some wisdom, some intellect to be a... Look, brothers, 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 this is, this is a whole other class. You got to have a little brain to have a woman. <laughs> you got to have some sense, brother. <laughs> Airheads only work on TV. Hey, man, your name is not Donald Trump. You better have some sense. Okay. Donald Trump can 
to be like he is. He's a multi yeah, he's worth three billion dollars. Folk make fun of him because he don't complete a sentence. He don't have to. He got he got folk that he can pay to complete the sentence for him. But you need some knowledge. Right. Come on, say knowledge. knowledge. The only way you have knowledge is number one, you have to study the word, study God, and study your woman. Know your wife. Yes, yes. Stare at your wife. Stop staring at your wife and stop staring at everybody else. Come on. Huh? You know everything about everybody else's wife, but nothing about yours. Wow. <laughs> I can't stay there long. Huh? You know something about everybody else's church, but you don't know what's going on in your own church. I ain't know it was no revival. Well, where you was at when they read the announcements? <laughs> huh? Pastor, I didn't know your niece's funeral was Saturday. Well, no. where were you? How can you not know what's going on in my life? You didn't announce it. <laughs> yeah, my, my niece died. First thing in my brain. And I, I can't say that because y'all going to make me keep on preaching oh, wow. with this crazy stuff. If, 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 if Brother Roman came and told me that one of his family members died, I'm going to be like, man, hey, what's going on? When the funeral, what's going on? Why? Because I love my brother. Yeah, I just didn't hear you say it. It, it don't have to. If you don't hear me, if you heard my, my niece died. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the niece died, be a funeral. Yeah, right. I understood that. Right. Don't, don't worry about it, brother. Don't take it personal. You, you back up here to perception filters. No, no, no. Yes, you are. I'm so accusation I'm to, I'm to, I'm you. No, I'm just trying to hear you. I'm just trying to hear you. Let's, let's close. Let's close. Husbands, what was them a quarter of dollars? Give what? Honor. Give it what? Honor. Look that word up. Give it honor to your wife is not treated like a second class citizen. My wife is the king of your monte and the queen. <gasps> Quiet up in here. My wife runs that house. I run the church. I don't walk in my house telling my wife what to do. Amen. She did she there more than I'm only at my house four hours a day. I'll be a fool to walk in there trying to think like, like I'm, I'm running thing and got everything under control. But can I get one witness up in here? Yeah, right. <laughs> Learn how to delegate and separate. I gotta close. How many times has that sister known me? <laughs> What you say, Amari? Who said that? Alyssa? Michaela. 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 Figures. Deacon Michaela, Lord Jesus. <laughs> this, was, this is what the Bible says. Giving honor to your wife as unto the what? This, the Bible is not calling a woman a weak. What the Bible is calling a woman is somebody that's valuable, that's priceless. Her price is four above, you, uh, four above rubies. Yes. It's talking about that Proverbs 31 woman. So what he's talking about is this. He's talking about the difference in Tupperware. Watch this now. Oh. This right here is a folder, right? It cost me two dollars. I can drop that all day long. This right here cost six hundred dollars. I ain't dropping it. Because this is a weaker vessel. <laughs> that means it has more value. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when the Bible says the well with the woman as a weaker vessel, you, you, you got to realize I have something valuable. Right. And I'm going to treat it like it's the most valuable thing in the world. Can I get one witness up in here? And it's being heirs together, what's this, the heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not what? Hinder. Brothers and sisters, we got to close for real. If you can't get along with your brothers, your sisters, your husband, and your wife, stop praying. You're wasting your time. God is not hearing you. You don't believe me? Go ahead and read uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, I believe, is chapter number 59, verse number 1. When you get a chance, read. Matter of fact, bring that up. Okay. Let me put this down. And I'm I think that's what. Isaiah what? What did I say? Yeah. What verse? What? One. Okay, what does it say there, sisters? Sister Right Reverend? Archbishops? We're studying. What's there? Because um, if people are sitting down, that means i got to keep preaching. I love you all. See, I, I, it feels so good to say that. Come on, come on, Old Testament. Isaiah. Yes. What y'all doing over there? Daydreaming? No. Don't discuss. Just get 59. We no. can discuss later. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is it 59? 59. 59. 59. Just go to 59, and the first thing that pops up. What does it say? He says, Behold. The Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. What's it say in the next verse? What's it say? He says, but what? 
your iniquity, your sin, your willful sin, your premeditated sin have separated you. When you did not honor your husband and you did not honor your wife, you separated yourself from God and God can't hear you. It's quiet up in here. Come on, say, if you want to be blessed, want to be blessed. follow the word of God. Follow Any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Yes, Brother Dave. Pray for my father. He had a mini stroke and he just really ain't been the same ever since. Wow, didn't know that. Okay. He has the same phone number? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll reach out to him. Any other prayer requests? 